Our second guests are from the NIMD headquarters in The Hague. They will take us through 15 years of NIMD. Uh, first of all, the executive director, Hans Brüning and Bernard Bott. Yes, thank you so much for being here, um, Mr. Bott and uh, Mr. Brüning. Uh, shall I say Hans and Bernard, is that okay? That's fine. Thank you so much, <laughs> Hans. Take us back to the early days. I mean, how did this start? There how must be some start? point where... where we... Yeah, it started directly after the collapse of apartheid in South Africa. And uh, <clears throat> in those days, in the early 90s, uh, South African parties came together and asked for support due to the old relations with the Netherlands political party support from the Netherlands, and then the moment in time, and the pressure of foreign affairs and, and, and having these own ideas, people sat together and said, well, instead of the continuation of bilateral party support from sister to sister party, liberals yeah. to liberals, etc., they said, well, it, it would be wise to join hands and to do it jointly. And so they started in the early 90s a committee for the Southern Africa, and later on it evolved into and I yes. So it's South Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah, Mr. Botti, you obviously have a long career being a diplomat, so I can understand why the NIMD asked you to come and be on the board to advise and watch and look what's going on. But, but the essence of, of the beginning, um, uh, the South Africa experience, do you have anything to say about that? Uh, yes, but uh, first of all, uh, I want to say how grateful I am that so many of my friends here have uh, come to this, uh, to this meeting uh, and, of course, uh, compared... Uh, to uh, my friend Hans, uh, he is a youngster, uh, and I have been uh, with this uh, NIMD for, uh, more, for more than eight years. Uh, so I have seen uh, the NIMD develop through a very difficult uh, period. Um, we have had a fantastic start. Uh, we went through some turbulent uh, times, but we emerged stronger than ever. And I think that we drew very much on the South Africa experience. Yeah? And how yes, is that? because uh, let's say what is important is that we try to bring a message that we are, let's say, an organization that, uh, let's say, uh, promotes democracy. And we come back to what that means uh, from party to party, from political parties to political parties. And um, South Africa was a case in point. Uh, the fact that we managed to create, let's say, a new atmosphere where political parties had their say rather than a uh, specific uh, group of uh, leaders, I think that was very important because for me, NIMD stands for accountability. That is to say, uh, the responsibility that uh, the elected people have towards the electorate. And that is what we have to keep in mind every time we talk about the message of NIMD. Is, is, is that true? Because this South Africa relation is very interesting because of Netherlands, South Africa. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, 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 of course, not only South Africa in, in, in those days. It always also had to do with uh, the moment in time. You know, it was just after the collapse of the communist system and uh, the total environment for democracy and, and new endeavors in terms of democracy was there. And, and on, on these waves, you could say, yeah. not only in South Africa, eh, this, this same committee that, that started working in South Africa explored Mozambique, and Mozambique is still one of our programs. So yeah. it evolved over the years, and, and, and after establishing NIMD, we were able to increase these kind of approaches and programs in now at least more than 20 countries. Yeah. So. Well, as I said at the beginning, I made a joke about being born in Uganda, but one of the things I find very interesting uh, and very good, no, 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 and <laughs> about what the NIMD does is that they operate in places where the demo democratic standard is not necessarily the same or the structure is necessarily the same as in the Netherlands. And I'm proud of that because I think yeah. you should always talk uh, to everybody. I'm, uh, but I would like to know from you two, what has made the NIMD stand out and what are you proud of? Well, to, to, to start with, if you allow me, I think that, that, that what I'm proud of is the fact that NIMD succeeded in having its own approach. And it's a combination of this idea of multi-party uh, approach. So without, uh, it was already stated by the minister herself, not only uh, related to uh, specific parties, but to all parties, 
who really want to, uh, to build on, uh, on their own system, that it's about a long-term approach and that we try to include all those, uh, those, uh, those people. And I think, yeah, that, that has been the, the, the principal idea behind it, uh, starting uh, in, in, in the early 90s. And then it's, of course, the combination, not only in, in having an approach that is rather unique, to be honest, uh, around the globe, there aren't that many organizations who <coughs> uh, uh, perceive their democracy support as a support to all parties. That, that, that's quite specific for some organizations. And that we managed to have not only those staff members on, on board that, that started off in 2000 already to, uh, to work in, uh, in NIMD, but that we had the opportunity to find these distinguished 20 and more partners in all these countries who on the basis of, let's say, the intrinsic values of a universal democratic system said, well, this is an idea we wanted to contribute to according to, to the own conditions and the context of our country, because it can't be the same as in the Netherlands, that yeah. was obvious at the same time, but according to our own context and conditions, we want to build on this principal idea mm -hmm. of uh, universal democracy, and that's what happened. Yes. So I'd like yes, to I, add, yeah? Um, yeah, No, I, I think that is the, let's say, a special recipe of NIMD, of which we are proud, and that is that we developed an idea that we do not want to impose democracy, our democracy, our kind of democracy, but that we try to develop the best democratic model in the country concerned, not only by telling them what to do or how to do it, but letting themselves develop their concept of democracy. Because as I say, the essence is that there is that relationship between parliamentarians, politicians, and the electorate. Yeah. And that we create that according to their own wishes and their own model. And every model is different. And I think the respect for their model, which they can develop themselves, not imposed by us, we help them, we create platforms, uh, we supply materials, and we leave it to them to, let's say, among themselves, discover what is best for my country, yeah. which form of democracy corresponds with the feelings of the electorate. Yeah. So basically we're thanking all our partners. Could we just give them a round of applause for yes, please. without you? I could go on and on because I'm so interested in, 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 in examples of places you've been on, on trips and etc. But we have obviously a show to do today and I have a few more questions left. How important are the Dutch multi-party routes? Because as you said, it was the political parties that, that, that started this. Uh, how important is that for you? Yeah, for us it's important. I was a bit surprised by, by the opinion of the minister, but we will continue the debate. Oh, you can say anything you want yeah, about yeah, I know, that. I know, I know, I know. But I put in this mildly and, you know, a bit yeah, yeah, diplomatic yeah. style and so on. And <laughs> no, no, no. The, the, the question is, I, I think I'm, I'm uh, on her side in terms of the professionalism of, of NIMD and, and, and the quality itself, not only NIMD, the Hague or something like that, but most, most specifically <laughs> those almost 25 partners and, and so on, that, that, that's one, uh, and that, that's needed, and that, that's quite logical after having uh, building on, on, on this effort for more than 15 years already. But the question still is that it, it, it shouldn't be that mechanical. It's about politics, it's about reality, it's about how do you deliver services and goods to the people. Uh, that, that's a political question. Like she said, managing a political party is another style. It, yeah. It's not a civil society organization in, in, in general. So for us, being rooted in the political scene in the Netherlands is still elementary and it's still needed that we have in, in order to contribute to our programs and also to contribute to, to the ideas and the direction of NIMD that we have those political parties on board to support us. Yes, there's also a question of confidence and trust yeah. because if you want to be credible in those 20 countries in which we operate, it's very good to be able to point out that we have the support of our own political parties. In other words, it is an organization that links political parties to political parties and that increases our own, uh, let's say, credibility. Yeah. And I think that is very important. But why are the Dutch so good at this? Is it the way we operate? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, we can... Well, we are a little bit preachers, of course, and yes. we always remain preachers, and we always think that we have the best formula. <laughs> and I'm very, in, in a way, as far as NIND is concerned, I'm very proud of it, yes. because I've seen that we were able not only 
to be very effective over these past 15 years, but I also see that many other countries try to imitate us. In other words, it was a concept that, let's say, brought enthusiasm to many, many people. We have inspired and if I look here in this room and I see all the people who have, let's say, contributed, because these people are the ones who implement the programs, then I say, I hope that from their side again, they will inspire Others. all those around them. Yeah. Hans, but going back to the minister, yeah. you said I don't fully agree. She's gone so we can speak freely. <laughs> you know, in, 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 terms, in terms, <laughs> let's say from my point of view, uh, we can't talk about NIMD just only in this professional way of, of, of delivering quality that's needed. She's right. But, but, but if it comes to the connection also the, to the Dutch political scene, I think there's still, still work to do yeah. for all of us because yeah. that relates to, uh, to questions we had in, in the past. It wasn't always that, that positive. That thing also Bernard referred to it. That's what we, over, uh, we have overcome. And now it's a question to, to, to build on this, this relation again. Uh, and, otherwise, if, 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 if we engage with, with our partners in, in, in all the countries, there are polit politicians behind representative in the board of our Center for Multi-Party Democracy yeah. connected to our country offices. So we have to engage these politicians uh, together. Together. That brings me to the next question. What, what is our biggest challenge? Because we're celebrating 15 years, we've overcome certain problems mm -hmm. and issues, mm -hmm. but we must look forward in this world where democracy is needed and, and still developing. So the challenge yeah. is for NIMD. Yeah, I think and, and, and we need to, to, to have around stamina, so to speak. So it, it's, it's a question of, 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 of the long run, uh, as it is, because you could easily say, well, what did we really achieve? You're not alone in this world eh, in terms of political party support or much other organizations, many other organizations as well. Um, but it, 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 it takes an, an, an awful lot of time uh, and, and people already cel celebrating here and congratulating me with the next 15 years and that, that's okay. Uh, because we, 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 need, we need our time to continue and to start new programs. So one is uh, continuation, stamina, because it, it can't be dealt with within a moment. And secondly, and I think that's the main challenge I see ahead in the next coming years, and we're working on this, that we uh, perceive and that, that, that we approach the questions of democracy as they are uh, uh, appearing at, at this moment. And, and that's for a moment later in this show, I presume, and Mr. Carrodes will speak to it. Yeah. Uh, speak I, to I, I see two challenges. The first one, uh, and I think that is the most serious one, is the fact that democracy in many parts of the world, let's say, is not strengthening, but yeah. is weakening. And I think, uh, and Hans referred to it, you know, that in spite of all our efforts over the past years, we see that uh, in many countries you get a different concept, a different idea of what democracy should For be. For example? No, look at Russia, look at China, uh, look at many Asian countries at the moment that say basically democracy is nice, but what is much better is a sort of a dictatorship combined with a, a sort of market uh, business philosophy. You know, that combination yeah. is the best for emerging countries. It is not. I believe that yeah. there is no growth, no development without a democratic system, whatever democratic system. That is the first challenge. I think the second challenge is, of course, for our own organization to continue to be acceptable to those countries and to have enough, well, support, both from our government and other <coughs> sponsors, <coughs> sorry, to, to be able to continue our work. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the two challenges. But, but isn't it, what, what do you say to the people who say, give them some time? It, 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 it didn't happen two days here in the Netherlands, so it won't happen no, 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 that no. quick in, 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 in Russia no, or no, somewhere else. I, I agree, but <clears throat> you are just talking, you are asking a yeah. question, and I'm saying those are the two problems yeah. we are facing at the moment, yeah. because the world has changed. If you look back at the year 2000, you look uh, <clears throat> today, what is happening, you see that there is a movement in the world of countries that are dissatisfied with the democratic model. And I think that is a very serious challenge yeah. which we have to tackle. And we can do it because I believe that our model and our recipe, as I said, yeah. is the best one. Okay. Yeah. We were able to, to work on, on quite a positive wave of democracy around the globe since the 90s, to, to be honest. Now we have changing times ahead. And it's, it's up to all of us to find our way forward in order to, to, to elaborate on the new context, new conditions in, in the countries. Uh, one of the examples is working together now in, in, in more so-called fragile states. It's not easy. 
to build on democracy in a fragile state, just coming out of a civil war or another war, <coughs> but what have you. But it's, it's up to us, together with our partners, to find yeah. a way forward in order to support those people, because the questions rising from, from people at the grassroots level, that you, you were talking about with the minister, these are universal questions. It's, it's, it's about having food, it's having education, it's about having housing. These are the questions that should be addressed by politicians. Yeah. And that's what we are working for. Okay. We started with South Africa, and many would say that they never expected South Africa to be at in where they are now mm -hmm. and the, the World Cup being hosted. Could I tempt you to, 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 to give us a, a vision of the future? Let's say we're here 15 years from now. <laughs> How will this world order look? Have we achieved these goals, overcome these <laughs> challenges, or will we need an extra 15? Well, I want some breaking uh, news for the newspapers as, tomorrow. As, as they say, a week in politics is an eternity. You are asking me about 15 years. Um, what I hope is that, um, let's say, the process of democratization, which we have witnessed uh, over a couple of years, and which at the moment is, let's say, in, in trouble. Yeah. I hope that in 15 years we can say we, thanks to NIMD and similar organization, managed to bring about a turnabout. Okay turn around uh, in the situation, and that we can, in uh, 15 years, sitting here, say, well, we did a good job, uh, we uh, accomplished what we wanted to accomplish, not only in those 20 or 25 countries but in, know, in which well. we are active, but by a sort of a uh, yeah, process you know, of, of, of sharing experiences with each other, that we can be content and say, hey, uh, we started something, we see the snowball effect, and look, yeah. Thank you very much. And let's, let's be honest, uh, politics is also about power holders. Eh? We were de debating this, this earlier. But uh, if you look around, and, and it's happening in all parts of the world, these people's movement are there. And if power holders aren't able to manage their own political systems in a proper way, people's movements will ask for change. It has happened before. Exactly. Could yes. we give a round of applause? Thank you so much, gentlemen.